Welcome to this seventh Easter Sunday. It's a beautiful morning here. And as I look through my window, I know that in another month, we'll be having summer. I'm glad we are all gathered here together for another day of worship. Because I know that we are two or three are gathered. God is there to bless. Are there any announcements? One announcement I'd like to make is that on every Wednesday at four o'clock, we have a Zoom call that is sent out. The announcement is sent out by Silka. It's the same link every week. But you can join us and just reconnect with people who you haven't seen in a while. It's a lovely session. People bring coffee, people bring wine, people bring knitting, <laughs> whatever you want. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to just have some FaceTime and, and say hello to each other and check up on each other and do that as a group. So all of you are welcome to join us at that point. We'll put, make sure the link is in the Facebook, on the Facebook page as well, so that you can feel free to do that. Uh, the more, the merrier. We can take up to 100 people. So, um, you know, feel free to welcome others to join us as well and get to know our community. I would like us to um, to keep um, George in our prayers because he's had he's had a few couple a few of his residents come down with COVID nineteen and he's been working twelve hour days and he's been down his staff has been down by forty percent his kitchen staff so it's I know it's very difficult for him. Okay, we'll do that. That um, we are underway in the process of finding an interim minister for College Street United Church. And uh, we've put together a team and we are put together, have put together a job description and we're looking forward to getting that up on the hub and having ministers across the country be able to apply to work with us for a couple of years and help us get ourselves uh, off to a great new start. And uh, we're very excited about that. I'm chairing that committee, so. Uh, now I'm going to begin with what we call our gathering music at College Street United, and I'm going to sing uh, one of our favorites, um, Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us heart, send us praise. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love. Send us forth, send us grace. Lord, listen. 
listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. And the opening hymn is number 213 in Voices United. Rejoice, the Lord is King. opening prayer. <clears throat> Most loving God, creator of us all, we turn to you to care for your people in need. We thank you for your presence among us and the peace you offer us. Send us your spirit to fill us with courage and hope so that we might be your instruments of love and assistance for others in need. Through this crisis, may we come together as people of faith in a crisis so often do by your grace. And may we come out of it more united and more determined to care for those most in need. Thank you for your fidelity and the graces we need this day. Amen. Okay, so now I will be reading Acts of the Apostles, Acts 1, verses 6 to 11. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem 
in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is Where Are You Walk from Handel Semele. Oh, oh, oh. 
So before the scripture reading, I just want to send up a small prayer. Lord, I pray that we may be worthy of these words you give us through Christ. And the scripture is from John 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him all authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you have gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with your own glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made known your name to these whom you gave from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of God. Thanks. Amen. This was a sad time for the apostles. It was a time of saying goodbye. And it was a time of grief. And Jesus had his apostles around him. And he was saying things like, in a little while and you will not see me. And again, in a little while I will not be there. I tell you, you will weep and mourn but the world will be glad. And though your mind will be turned into grief, your grief will be turned into joy. This reminded me so much of Victorial death scenes where the person on the bed is given a lot of strength to say his last words and he pronounces his death and he understands the grief that will come with it but he promises joy. Now, we have learned a lot about grief since that time. And I don't think one of the ends of grief, we are, there is acceptance, but we, the word joy does not come in. I can understand acceptance, but joy at another's death is a bit difficult for me to, to deal with. But that's what the words say here your grief will be turned into joy. The situation with grief being turned into joy and with something remarkable being made about the men standing up by the two angels, why are you looking up into heaven, seems strange to me at this time. But this is a time of ascension. Ascension when something strange, something unusual has just happened with the disciples. They have just seen Christ rise up in a cloud and go to heaven. And they are still looking up and wondering whether any further miracles would happen. And I reminded of a situation where we have all experienced. I remember during the 80s or 90s with NASA and the comings and goings of people going up into the moon or going up into space. And we were all glued on our televisions to see what was going up. But I remember a more tangible situation when I worked in Africa many years ago. I was there from 82, 1982 to 1985. And I saw people planting in October. They planted their maize and they expected produce. And by the time I was ready to go home, for Christmas, drought had set in and the corn 
was drying up. It was withering on the, on the, on the ground. And people were worried, and I left and went to BC. And on my return, my first words were, did the rains come? Did the rains come? Now, that's an unusual question to ask if you come from BC, because it never stops raining there. But I was worried about the coming of the rains. And my friend said, no, they didn't. And we drove two hours up back to the school, and we saw fields and fields of drought, of dead corn, dead maize in the fields. And then we finally arrived and people were really downcast and they were looking for rains and they were all looking up into the sky. It was not surprising because they were looking for clouds. They were looking to see if there were any clouds that were coming that would bring them hope. And then after a few days, there were rains again. And we let our students out to go and help the farmers plant new corn into their fields. And everybody came back with joy because we were happy that we had contributed something. And the new seeds sprouted. And we had hope. And again, that hope fell because more drought returned. And the people were despondent. They had been hoping a second time for growth and for harvest. And now there was nothing. And the government offered to help. And that brought new hope. And one day in our soccer field, there were about a hundred and so villagers gathered. And all eyes were up into the sky. And they were looking upwards because there was promise of food. And soon we heard the sounds of a helicopter. And as it approached, we looked up further in the sky, everybody who was there. And the helicopter landed and crates of maize and ground corn and beans and fish, small fish were unloaded. And the people ululated the sound of joy that they made when they were happy. There was real joy at that moment because God had blessed them and they had received food and they had received new grain that they could sow. And so I could understand how after a feeling of hopelessness, there could be joy. And I know that we are in a situation where we are expected from that ascension story to feel some sort of joy. Yes, we do. We're glad of the promise that Christ is coming again. Just as we feel a bit calmed by the fact that there are loosening of uh, restrictions on our movement, we feel a little bit relieved when we hear that people can go outside again as long as they follow the, the limitations that were already given to them, as long as they uh, wear their face masks, as long as they distance themselves, as long as they wash their hands, so that there are expectations meant. And we look forward to the joy when we can say, COVID-19 is over and we are no longer required to stay indoors. We are no longer required to restrict our movements. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We heard how our friend George is under great stress because of his clients and colleagues being affected by COVID-19. In fact, this has turned out to be a much bigger event in our lives than we anticipated two months ago. It's lasting longer, affecting more, and stressing us all just a bit more than we thought it might. By now, we've all heard of someone who was affected by it. One of my friends in my outdoors club had a father die in nursing care. Another church organist I've known for many years had a close friend over 70 who was in a nursing home with MS and he was affected by the virus and died. And very recently, someone else I know in North Bay who used to live in Toronto and was a musician also. He's friendly with an elderly couple who were in Spain in March and came home with the virus and the husband died and the wife was in fact quite ill for some time and described it as nothing she had ever felt before, whether a cold or a flu or anything. For many children and young people, this will be their first knowledge that life carries dangers, carries mortality. And so it's good to remember amidst all of this that we can sing hallelujah. We thank you, creator in heaven, for the many times you let us know that we do not need to despair even when we are surrounded by darkness, weakness, or sickness. You hear the desires of our hearts. You love us for all that we are. We in turn love our Savior Jesus and we praise his name. Give us strength to remain in this spirit. Come to us, showing us your power and glory. Come through the storms of life. Come in the inner quiet of heart. Make us able to grasp what it means for us that you are our creator. In Jesus Christ, amen. This is our last Sunday as we're gathering together. Next week, I will ask you to go to your Facebook page, the College Street uh, United Church Facebook page, and look for Shining Waters. And look on the events part and you will see that there would be other churches which will be having services there. Click into them and enjoy and share their church experience with them. As this happens, we will be thinking of you until we find somebody to supply for the rest of the summer. But our expenses will remain the same. And so we're asking you, to contribute, go to uh, the, uh, those same pages and see where you can give funds to the church or send a check to the church or something so you could insist, assist us as we continue to try to keep the church afloat. Thank you for this, for your gifts. <laughs> Great. And our closing hymn is number 395 in Voices United. Come in, come in and sit down. Yeah, no reason can explain. 
So share in the laughter and cry in the pain, for we are a part of the we anticipate being separate for several weeks, we call on God to watch over us and keep us safe and bless us until we meet again. Amen. Shalom to you now. Shalom, my friends. May God's full mercies bless you, my friends. In all your living and through your loving, Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom. <laughs>